Well, can you believe it? Spring is already here. Hi, I'm Lexi Van Heeren, and on this edition of Destination Phoenix Sky Harbor, we have all the latest news happening at the airport. Why are military personnel visiting Terminal 2, and what new landmark is complete and already in business? Also, here are some little-known facts about Sky Harbor's past. We've got the juicy details. For starters, if you're traveling out of the country this spring, Ramon Plaza explains what you can't leave home without. There are new passport rules in effect for those flying internationally. As of the 23rd of January, all U.S. citizens flying into the United States from Canada, the Caribbean, as well as Central and South America, including Mexico, are required to have a valid passport on their return. In addition to that, they, there are certain other non-U.S. citizens, such as uh, Canadian citizens and uh, Mexican citizens, who now have to have a passport from their country also in their possession when they come into the United States. But is the passport the only document you can use? One of them is a Merchant Mariner's card for those people who are in the service. Another one is the Nexus Air Card, which is a trusted traveler program for people who frequently come in and out from Canada. For those who are not U.S. citizens, but are legal permanent residents, their green card is acceptable. Currently, there are over 8,000 different types of identity documents in use in the United States. We have documents such as birth certificates, whether they're real or fake. We have driver's licenses. We have social security cards. We have check cashing cards, ID cards, school ID cards, all sorts of identity documents out there that our officers have to be familiar with. By requiring U.S. citizens to bring a valid, unexpired U.S. passport, it limits that to one document that our officers are very familiar with. We can tell very quickly who that person is, what their citizenship is, and if that document is in fact valid or if it is a counterfeit document. Going through security upon arrival is as streamlined as possible. Don Anderson, Port Director for U.S. Customs and Border Protection in Phoenix, will take us through the procedures when you arrive from an international flight in Phoenix. They present their passports, their other documents, their immigration documents to enter into the country, uh, whether it be a visa or their, their uh, I-94, as well as their customs declaration to the Customs and Border Protection Officer. They go through the process of checking the databases and determining uh, whether or not they have the right to enter the country, at which point they do, then they're processed through and able to pick up their baggage. If there is a question about whether or not a person is able to enter the U.S., then they are referred over to a secondary inspection area. About 99.9% .9 of the time, passengers are processed without any problem. Children, too, are required to have a passport. So you cannot group families together on one passport like you used to be able to. They each have to have their own passport now. So if you're planning a trip out of the country, pick up a passport and get prepared. Visit the websites to find as much information as they can on when to start, what the fees are, what documents are required to do this, because it takes some planning to be able to get the birth certificates and the photo IDs and the passport photos and the money together for this. It takes about six to eight weeks to get your application processed. Most importantly, have a wonderful trip. I'm Ramon Plaza for Destination Phoenix Sky Harbor. Parking at the airport doesn't have to be difficult, just plan ahead. To help you do that, call the 24-hour parking hotline at 602-273-4545. It provides up-to-the-minute parking space availability. Also, give yourself at least two hours before your flight to park and check in luggage. Spring is one of the busiest travel seasons of the year, and arriving early is the key to low-stress travel. During the holiday season, Sky Harbor opened a second stage-and-go cell phone waiting area just east of Terminal 4. You may already know about the free waiting area on the west side. Now both sides of the airport have stage-and-go cell phone waiting areas. Drivers are allowed to wait in their car free of charge until the passengers they're meeting are ready for pickup at the curb. Portable restrooms are at the locations for added convenience. Another airline is on the scene at Sky Harbor. Hey, isn't that IndyCar racer Danica Patrick with an air tram plane hot on her tail? Yes, it is. And it's all in good fun to celebrate the launching of AirTran Airways' new service from Phoenix to Atlanta out of Terminal 3. We at the City of Phoenix Aviation Department would like to extend a very warm welcome to AirTran. I know AirTran will be happy to hear 
that we set another record for passengers last year. We had 41.4 million people. That was the fourth record year in a row for Sky Harbor. Danica Patrick, who is also a Valley resident, took a spin in a Ferrari 360 Modena in honor of the event. I'm very excited. I'm excited that not only myself, but all the other people that come here to visit um, for the weather uh, are going to have a good time and get here on time and get here and get here easily. Um, I love direct flights and I'm excited that they're in this airport. AirTran, known for low price fares for business and leisure travelers alike. Check them out. It's time to say goodbye to the 181-foot air traffic control tower. Since the 1970s, controllers in this tower have guided numerous planes as they take off and land here at Sky Harbor. Now there's a new kid on the block. Stephanie Ribadal explains. The Valley's skyline has changed thanks to Sky Harbor's newest addition. The Federal Aviation Administration just completed this new Phoenix landmark. At 335 feet, it's nearly twice as tall as its predecessor. United States Secretary of Transportation, Mary Peters, toured the new tower and made the official grand opening announcement. The old tower was designed 30 years ago when only 420,000 planes a year took off and landed here. But now Phoenix is among the fastest growing, in fact I think you just edged out um, Nevada recently as we'll call it the fastest growing cities in, in the country today and it's time for a new tower that can keep pace with that growth. This new facility co-locates both the tower and the Terminal Radar Approach Control, or TRACON. In the past, these buildings have been separated. Controllers inside of the tower manage all of the air traffic that is departing, landing, and on the ground at Sky Harbor. TRACON controllers manage air traffic in the surrounding Phoenix airspace. FAA Arizona District Manager Philip Thornton was proud to showcase what is being called the ultimate in state-of-the-art technology. These are all inbounds. Of course, these guys are like you know, a couple hundred miles out. The new tower will give controllers unobstructed 360-degree views of the airfield, allowing them to direct more airplanes safely and efficiently. The beauty of it environmentally for our controllers is the, we have the workstations in which we're standing now. Just beyond that, still enclosed within the glass, is a what we call a maintenance ring. And so that's displaced from us roughly 10 feet. So environmentally, the air conditioning and heating um, isn't blowing right on you. It's going up those windows and being cooled. And there's four heating and cooling zones in here because it is so large. Uh, environmentally, it's just wonderful for us. Phoenix Mayor Phil Gordon joined the secretary for a tour of the new tower cab. Mayor Gordon and his staff does a wonderful job of including the FAA, the air traffic piece, in discussions about growth, how to work, what yeah. their plans will do to affect us, which affect the customer, and it, it works out real well. The $89 million tower, funded by the Federal Aviation Administration, is now fully operational and home to over 100 FAA controllers and staff. For Destination Phoenix Sky Harbor, I'm Stephanie Ribadal. Where can military members, veterans, and their families relax while at Sky Harbor? We'll tell you where in just a moment. Sky Harbor then and now. I'm Lisa Aquafreda, and I'll have that story coming up on Destination Phoenix Sky Harbor. Phoenix is in a drought. Reduce your water use by 5%. Whether you're serving or have served in the military, as you come through Sky Harbor, we've got just the place for you. It's right up these steps. Valerie Mason gives us a look around. A home away from home awaits men and women of the armed services at the Phoenix Military and Veterans Hospitality Room, located in Sky Harbor's Terminal 2. It will actually allow a lot of people visibility. Uh, Phoenix is a big airport. Uh, a lot of soldiers come through here going to missions, and this is, this is going to be excellent as far as gives them a place to stop, refreshing, and number one, gives them direction. Go. All right. Mayor Phil Gordon was on hand at the official ribbon cutting this past December. The first uh, came about uh, as a result of the Veterans Commission, which was the very first act that I signed as mayor. It was an idea I had, the commission, to form a commission made up of veterans 
that would further further our focus on how we can help our veterans, those men and women that have served our country to protect us, to give us this great quality of life. One way, give them and their families a place of their own at one of the top ten busiest airports in the country. Foosball, anyone? With games like this, military personnel can pass the time away before a flight or while waiting to pick someone up. Manager Ann Theodosis witnesses the comings and goings firsthand. You know, it's just really nice to be able to give somebody a hug and say goodbye, not be in the public eye. Everything has been donated, from the furnishings to the monthly rent that's collectively picked up by the airlines. It's fantastic. Uh, when I first approached the commission about donating the money, I was told this was going to be a first-class operation, and they weren't kidding. The place is staffed by dedicated volunteers. They make the coffee, they make sure the room is like a typical home, vacuum, dusted, coffee's made, and then they're ready when they come through the door to say, hey, glad you stopped by. Though it's called the hospitality room, it's actually made up of several rooms. As you walk in, you've entered the living room. Straight ahead is an activity room with a rotating game table. Next door is a play area for small children. You'll also find shelves filled with books for all ages, videos, and a computer with internet access. The kitchen has complimentary snacks and drinks, and the entertainment room is where you can kick up your heels while watching the big screen TV. But the best part about it? Well, just ask a soldier. Oh, it's the couches, absolutely. After you're sitting on the plane for five hours coming from Baltimore, no better place to crash than to crash out right here. No matter which terminal a veteran flies out of, it's just a short ride on the shuttle bus to Terminal 2. For the comforts of home and to escape the hustle and bustle, it's well worth the trip. I truly expected the first month to have maybe two or three a week until they really started to hear about it. And in eight weeks, we've had over 480. 480. So that's an average of about 45, 50 a week. And it's incredible. It's wonderful. The word is out. Veterans, if you're traveling through Sky Harbor, stop by the hospitality room. The coffee's brewing, and there's a comfortable chair with your name on it. For Destination Phoenix Sky Harbor, I'm Valerie Mason. One area inside of the military hospitality room has special meaning to City of Phoenix employees. Officers from the Phoenix Police Airport Bureau donated their own money to dedicate the activity room to Marine Corporal Christopher Lafka, who was killed in Iraq in October of 2004. His father, Ken Lafka, is a police officer with the Phoenix Police Airport Bureau. Christopher was 22 years old when he died. It's a, a bittersweet emotion. Um, it's unfortunate that uh, my son gave his life in the service of his country, and that's what this room is, is honoring. Uh, but then again, it's also gratifying that people do recognize the sacrifice that he made. Everything inside the room was purchased with the money raised by the officers at the airport bureau. We're a small bureau of officers, and uh, we ask for donations of a minimum of uh, $40 each. And officers, uh, almost every officer in the bureau donated, and it, would, they, uh, it ranged from $40 to $250 uh, per officer, and we raised over $4,000. The idea was spearheaded by Sergeant Randy Hall. I think it was just among a lot of the officers talking at the, uh, here at the airport, the officers that work here, that we wanted to help out with the room. It was very easy once, uh, once the officers at the bureau knew what we were doing and why we were doing it. After the attack on 9-11, Christopher expressed his desire to do something. A man of his word, he joined the Marine soon after. His family is very proud of him. He was a great young man, uh, much like most of the people in the military today. Uh, they were all moved by the events of September 11th, 2001, and uh, they answered the call of duty. The Lapka family hopes this room brings joy to all the military men and women who come by. For those that do, take a look at Christopher's plaque on the wall and remember a fellow serviceman. The Phoenix Police Department remembered one of their own with the renaming of the hangar, which houses the department's air support unit at Phoenix Deer Valley Airport. The ceremony was held this past December. 
Officer Don Schultz was part of a nine-member diving squad with the Phoenix Police Department. He died in May of 2004 when he was fatally injured in the line of duty during a search and recovery dive mission. In his 19 years of service, his love and enthusiasm for the job